Hey. Hey. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It has been a long time. Yes. I was just telling my wife, I think it's been 35 years or so. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe, maybe, maybe not, a little we're not less. that old. Yeah. We're not no. that old. Don't age us. <laughs> we don't have to be aged. Maybe 15 years. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah. It has, it's been a while. So yeah. Yeah. Well, um, tell me about your music because I'm just kind of now seeing that you have, um, like you've been in a band. And yeah. When I was, I started playing guitar when I was 14 years old and then uh, around the time I was 18 or so, I, I started playing with different groups and things. And then, long story, a little bit shortened. It, it was around when I was 25 or so, um, the band started falling apart. I got a lot more serious into my college and uh, decided to go ahead and graduate. <laughs> and uh, so, and I graduated with my my BA in, in graphic design. Um, so I... I thought it was about time to settle down with the guitar a little bit. And then um, when I got married at 27, I, I took a hiatus from about 10 years from playing in bands and things like that. Then we moved back here in around the Richmond, Virginia area around 2016. And it happened to be at a barbershop downtown in Hookwell, where it's kind of a cultural center bar barbershops are it's kind of a weird thing it's it's yeah. like he's got really cool art and everything all over the walls and he had a bunch of people come down had a little bit of a it wasn't really a party but it was like a music gathering he invited all kinds of people with music backgrounds down there to play and i hadn't played out in a long long time and so apparently i impressed people because i had a couple different people ask me to join their bands and I don't say no very often to things like that because uh, um, even though I was uncomfortable doing it, uh, I was always told in school, it's like you, if you don't know how to do something, you say yes, if you really want to do it and figure out the how later on. And so I, I went ahead and agreed to it. Then it was, I, I got asked to play one show and here's your list of songs. It was 40 different songs. I, and 35 of them I had never heard of probably, um, just cover songs that I, I, it was from before my, my time, your time, um, things I had never heard of. And so I still said yes. And I went ahead and learned all the songs. I only played two shows with that band, um, because I didn't really like it. They were all about 10 years older than me. And, and so, um, it wasn't just the age difference. It was more the cultural difference. It's like totally different um, type of stuff that I wanted to do. I wasn't really into like playing cover music. So I, I had also said yes to my brother-in-law who, who was down there with, with uh, he didn't ask me, but the girl that was there with him sings in the band with him. And um, she asked me if I was interested and, and her husband at the time asked if I was willing to join and so i went and went to a practice and i was i was a little bit hesitant because i could tell that a couple of them didn't know me at all they 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 weren't sure how it was going to go it's like we don't want to know we don't know if we want to invite another member into our family and then i practiced with them they got i was around them for about a month or so and then i became a full-fledged member of the band um that i'm in now still um it's going on two and a half years I've been playing with them um, but we're recording an EP right now five songs we have probably 15 or 20 of our own songs that I think are really good but, um, but I play the lead guitar in that band um, and awesome yeah it's been going really well yeah what genre of music is it so that's the weirdest thing about it all we we can play anywhere from folk to rock to a little bit harder rock. So it's kind of a, a toss up. It's the best mm -hmm. ones. I love it is, all of that. It is. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Well, so now did you play like in high school or middle school or anything? Cause I don't, I don't remember you playing music, but you know, we didn't, we grew up together, but we didn't yeah. really hang out a lot. So. Yeah, I see, I didn't, I didn't play a ton. Um, I started playing and then you, I was, I was a very protected child. Didn't get to go out a lot. So. It was one of those things that once I hit 18, I was, I was off and running, but, um, 
I stayed good. I was a, I was a good kid, but I was yeah. I was ab- I was able to go do things. And so I started playing along with other people. And because when I was in middle school and high school, I was just playing along to the radio, just mimicking everything I heard. And so I'm self-taught. Starts. Yeah. So I, I did take one course in middle school, which is a middle school course. Uh, some people learn in middle school and I was the opposite. I, I wasn't a big soaker of knowledge um but it got me started and then i i gradually just kept playing along the way and copying everything i heard from Jimi hendrix to nirvana nirvana much easier of course but uh, things like that and we're from that generation like we yeah. remember all the kurt cobain and pearl jam like i was yes. really big into pearl jam and, and all yeah of that, so oh yeah yeah, yeah. allison change grunge rock okay that was yeah. the era <laughs> definitely definitely oh, Man. And we sneak a little bit of that into our style. Well, I, my personality comes in in our band's um, music that way. Um, because we all, when you have, well, at the time we had six people. Now we're down to four um, in the band. Um, pregnancy, things like that happen. And, and second child will do that for, for um, so we're hoping she comes back. But um, everybody throws their two cents in, but without talking. It's one of those things. And that's how the music gets made. We don't talk about what we want to do. We just start playing and then we, we add our little bits in here and there to see how it comes out. It's a good mixing pot. That's cool. Yeah. I love to hear about the process of how the songs come together and the albums come together and and all the different Mm -hmm. artistic styles and how musicians sort of mix that and and make it happen. Yes. Yeah. I'm definitely, I'm not the word guy at all in our (laughs) band. Um, (laughs) But uh, that's my brother-in-law, Nick, and Savannah, the, one, the ones that I joined up with at the barbershop at that time. Um, they're both very good at writing. Well, so uh, you're a family guy. You've got kids. Um, what mm-hmm. is that like being a musician and a dad? I mean, are the kids really involved in the music? Do they like to listen to you play? Yeah, they, they, they want to learn. And the one that's it just turned nine is is slowly picking it up. Um, they have their little toy guitars they run around with. They do like to come in and bang on things when I'm playing. And uh, I'm surprised you can't hear them downstairs now running around. But um, but yeah, they're they're really into it. I think it may be that they're trying to impress me, but I'm hoping that they pick it up along the way on their own and want to do it without thinking it's going to get my attention because I already give them enough attention. <laughs> it's one of those things. Right. So, well, that's yeah. where it starts and it sparks. Um, my youngest, um, he plays the piano now and wants to play mm-hmm. the guitar, but he was like two or three years old with a little toy guitar, you know, running around the house, yeah. strumming and um, giving his best head, head banging moves and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's, I love to see kids get into that and, and the music right. I, family. Yeah, I was down, I was trying to empty out space on my phone last night and I get, I kept going through all the photos that I have photos from back all the way to 2012. And they're with them holding their guitars and things like that, just walking around the house. I'm like, how do you get rid of those photos? I know I've got them backed up somewhere else. So I'm kind of, kind of a photo hoarder when it comes yeah. to that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, it's, it's so cool to see like uh, they're, they're little sponges at that age. So all we have to do is get out of their way and then, I don't know, try to, try to raise them without stopping their creativity. Absolutely. And I think music is so important, um, you know, for kids and um, for just those neural pathways in their brain, all the connections that they make. I mean, just art in general, but music is, is just something that helps them develop. And yeah. And they're, they're very visual as well with the um, like, if, when you, you'll see him getting like, you're just getting into like the, the head movements and everything like that. They, they don't, know to stop any of that until somebody tells them you're going you need to sit down and be quiet kind of thing so as they get older that's going to grow out of them but like the ones that are great musicians never get that taken out of them or they get it back somehow so, right and do you find two kids pick up on patterns and like mm-hmm. rhythms and and beats very easily yeah and that's how i started uh teaching the nine-year-old i started with music theory like telling them how the patterns are of just visually on there and then spatially on the fretboard how it goes it goes the alphabet and so i say this pattern is here this pattern is here 
this pattern is here. So I'm trying to build on that early so that he can see see the entire fretboard where I didn't figure it out till I was late in my like 18, 19 year old reach when I was starting to figure out. Um, I, I know the sounds are already there, but I had no idea what what letter is associated with that, things like that. So yeah, I'm trying to help him build patterns in that. And, and uh, he's really into Jack Johnson now. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, yeah, so his music taste is a little bit crazy. It's um, he knows when Led Zeppelin's on the radio. He knows when ACDC is on the radio. He loves Jimi Hendrix. Um, he like he likes Keith Urban because I do, and he likes Brad Paisley because I do because they're guitar slingers. They they do what I like to think I do. So um, so yeah, he's it's really neat to see them be able to pick up um, a little bit of an eclectic sense of what's what's out there as opposed to just um, what's on the radio and things right. like that too. let him so, develop his own style exactly find what he likes yeah that's great yeah. yeah if you could work with any musician who would it be i have to ask um i think in which genre those things um if it was in country music i think keith urban because he's so laid back um or brad paisley because he's got they've both got this infinite knowledge that nobody knows about like they have no idea how in depth these people's minds are to get to the level they're at they're very commercialized now but i think that would be really cool um just to go hang out and see how they how their patterns are on the guitar because we're all stuck in a rut when we start playing like i find myself like i've tried to record myself for just doing demos and I find that I play the same things over and over and over again, and I need other things to like snap me out of it. But of course, Jimi Hendrix has passed away. He'd be amazing to see um, and to talk to. But um, yeah, I think I think mainly I'm I'm drawn to people who play guitar and sing at the same time, um, even though I don't do that. Well, you have taken your love of music and guitar and, and all of that and put it into a business. So mm -hmm. I, I love the logo, by the way, that it, Thank you, you designed that. Yeah, and yeah. And you got the t-shirt on. Yeah, they just came in yesterday morning at 1030 in the morning. It was delivered while I was at church. So. Oh, man. And I've never even heard of that. So like being delivered. Well, it started by trying to keep myself busy um, about two years ago, a year and a half ago when COVID started happening. So I started taking a picture of one of my guitars every day and posting it on Instagram. And so I, I developed, I went from having maybe 50 followers all the way. Now I'm about to hit 8,000 on uh, Instagram and it's, it keeps on going and it's just pictures of my guitars that I take. And um, so I, I started having people ask me for, for free guitars because um, they thought I was rich. <laughs> it's like, well, no, sure, I'm, not, I'm not. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, I'm just passing these out. And so I, I went into this thought process. It's like, well, I really enjoy watching these videos with my kids where people give things away. Like they're constantly just going out and handing people things. And I'm not going to make a video of doing that, but I got tired of telling people no. And so I, I developed this brand Overdriven. Um, which is based on kind of like my personality. It's like, I'm a little bit anxious. I, I don't stop working. I, my mind never stops. A lot of people are like that, but I was, it's like, how can I develop something where I can give back, um, give, not give back, but give to people who don't have these things. So these aren't like expensive guitars. A lot of the times, so, I mean, they are to me, to me and other people, but to the high, high end of guitars, like there's some guitars worth two or $300,000 now. Um, seems nuts to me. But you can buy brand new guitars for ten thousand dollars now, and so I started. I set out to find a way to sell things in order to raise money and give away guitars. So it's almost like a raffle now, but that's only because the law does not allow me to give, like, pick people myself. I can't pick anybody myself to give out guitars to and raise money with the product. So I had to make it so that I sell merchandise. And then I'm going to slip off camera just a hair here. Like, this is the first guitar I'm giving away. That is beautiful. And it's brand new Fender American Professional 2 Stratocaster. It costs $1,500. And 
And if the person ends up winning it, doesn't want it, I'll buy it back um, from the person because I like it. But, um, but, <laughs> but I've, I've just taken that little, little bit of a audience that I have on Instagram and I created my own website, like everything that's being done with the business I'm running. Um, I'm doing the fulfillment. I'm doing the, the writing for the website. I, I've taken like all the designs for the t-shirts, the, the picks, the I've designed exactly how I want the picks, um, designed the packaging, had it made for me, but um, that's just because I don't have time to do everything. Um, and so I've got necklaces I'm selling that my son actually makes these. Um, and then he gets to keep the profits on that. But um, oh, that's so nice. Yeah, thank you. So I've just I've just about a month and a half into this and I'm I'm trying to get it so that where I can keep increasing the amount that I give away. Um, so I'm going to give away this guitar this time. The next one I'm hoping will be uh, a Gibson Les Paul, which is these are dream guitars for me, like especially I'm a Gibson 10. girl. Love, yeah. love Gibson. So yeah, okay. that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got three Gibson Les Pauls, a uh, Gibson ES 335. My nephew last week um inherited his well, inherited sounds rough. His grandfather's not passed away, but his grandfather gave him his guitar. It's a 1967 um Gibson J50, uh, an old acoustic, really old. Oh. And he, he, he left it downstairs for me here to keep um so he can come over and learn how to play. And I'm not a guitar teacher, but I'm going to try. <laughs> um, just the J45 because. J45 is my favorite. The yes. sunburst, the vintage. Oh, oh, it's great. <laughs> yeah. And I got I got my version of that uh, recently because that, that was one of my dream guitars. But I didn't I didn't have enough to tie into that right now because they're expensive. So I ended up getting. I don't have the, one. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, I ended I up getting. The, yeah well check out the taylor american dream ad 17 it's the same shape it's the it's made in the u.s and i ended up getting one of those about two months ago and it's a black top with wood um wood like just tone woods around the side and oh, back beautiful yeah so, awesome. I, so it's it's my version of a j45 because uh, i'm not gonna be able to get one of those anytime soon well, how long do people have to get in on winning this one that you've got up right now? This is through December 5th. I only gave myself two months on the first one, um, which is kind of crazy uh, because most businesses don't survive a year, <laughs> is what I understand. And I'm, I'm trying to make it work where I'm um, recouping the money for the guitar, at least on, at the, in the first two months. So we'll see if it works. If not, I'm just going to have to give this guitar away and that will be the advertisement to keep it going in the future because a lot of people are skeptical they have no idea if i'm a, a person that's a man of his word kind of thing they don't know if i'm a scam artist which definitely not <laughs> um, i would so, vouch for you yeah I, thank I would you. we grew up together i would vouch for you i know yeah. your whole family <laughs> so. yes yes thank you so and i hope to employ a lot of them this is another thing it's like if i can get this thing going i can get them packing things with me but so far, I've had fun packing the stuff alone, um, but I haven't been overwhelmed. So I've, I've had some people buy as many as one guy bought 47 packs of fix hoping to win. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, so it's kind of crazy. That's a lot <laughs> yeah. of fix. <laughs> it is. It is. I, asked, I, I wrote him an email and I said, thank you so much for doing this. And he said that he, he's a Christian in Florida. Um, and he really believes in what I'm doing is what he says. I've never met him before. I just spoke to him this one time and he said, you've, you've helped me to try to win a guitar. Number one, that I really want. Number two, I'm helping on a business that I really believe in. And number three, I, I want to make sure I don't run out of picks for a very long time. It's <laughs> like, well, if you run out of picks, something's wrong. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you know, touring on stage and throwing them to the audience or something. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. Going through those. Yeah, exactly. Which I hope to do one day myself. So we'll see if that works out. So well, you mentioned be... surfing and I'm thinking yeah. we've, we've got to get Eddie Vedder some of these picks. Like we need right. to find a way to get right. him to use these picks. So we'll, I don't have any connections, but we'll figure no. out. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of guys I talked to that um, one of them, uh, he he just wrote me and asked me if 
he said that he could help me and I could help him get our businesses going. And I was like, well, okay, sure. I have no problem helping you. I'll, I'll definitely promote you. And then he told me that his brother knows Paul McCartney. <laughs> and then he has done oh. work for uh, Ted Nugent. I was like, why do you need me? <laughs> like, I'm glad I said yes before you mentioned that. So, but because uh, now wow. I don't seem like a guy who is uh, trying to mooch off you. So, but uh, yeah. So, Paul McCartney, um, that might be next level. I mean, sorry, yeah, Eddie, but that I think we, <laughs> we're taking that's it as, higher. <laughs> it's as high as it gets. It's you don't get you don't get any, any higher than that. And my son actually knows the old ver the young version and the new version of, of Paul McCartney already, which is kind of neat. So yeah, I'm yeah. a longtime Beatles fan. So that he's my favorite Beatles. Cool. So yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to like him. He's just so happy. <laughs> so, he is, he is. And um, an ultra creative, ultra creative. I think he wrote Very most prolific. of the songs by a while. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One of the most prolific songwriters probably of all time. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. okay. So what do people have to do to try to get this guitar to, you know, promote your business to get in there? They okay. just go on and, and buy things off of your website or. Yeah. Every $5 they spend is an entry to get the guitar. Um, and so I tried to make it very fair prices. The picks are only $5.50 a pack, which is how much picks they're around what picks cost anyway. Um, so it's not, it's not like a premium to get an entry to the guitar, but since it's a name brand, people don't know, they might be skeptical to buy the things like that. And um, it's overdriven mfg.com is where my site is. And then the same thing goes for Facebook, same thing for um, Instagram. And then my other handle is Casey overdriven um, on Instagram. And that's where I have my main following. Um, okay. So yeah. And so is that where you want people to find you if they want to um, follow sure. you personally or your music or do you have different sites for each? Well, one? the music is loose bearing um, on Instagram or not. It's, it is Instagram too. But it's Facebook and Instagram loose bearing music. Um, and we have a, a YouTube channel, but we haven't put anything on there in a while um, while we're still writing and, and recording. And we're hoping to take this little bit of a break that we've had because of COVID. You couldn't exactly go out and play. I think we've played two or three shows in the past year, which is uh, very little for us because we were playing. We were we were only playing about two or three times a month. But when you go from that starting off to nothing, is um, a little bit of a scary situation. But we're doing the this uh, EP in the studio as kind of a demo to get into bigger genres or not genres, but locations, kind of like uh, uh, small theaters and things like that. We want to expand out of the bar scene that we never really wanted to be part of um, to where we can play like hour shows, like one hour instead of three or four. Um, and yeah, awesome. so we're trying to get into that. Mm -hmm. When's that EP coming out? Do y'all have a date yet? Uh, Thursday, I think we're starting to finish our last uh, our last song our fifth one that's going to be on it. Um, and then it's going to get mixed. So I would, I would venture to say about a month and a half from now, maybe two months. Awesome. Um, just so I don't put pressure on, on my brother-in-law who's going to be mixing it. So, <laughs> get it done now. Hate, right. I've, I've, I hope my editors don't see this, but I get, I get told that they, they will tell clients he'll have the book to you at this date. I was like, why well, did you sell them that? <laughs> so. Yeah. The scariest thing in my world is telling someone when they can expect pages or manuscript. Cause it's like, Oh, now I've got to stick to that. Oh no. <laughs> right. Right. And I had an editor who was my senior editor that uh, is retired now. She said, you've got to quit giving dates, like give a vague answer. <laughs> and uh, unless you know, you're going to stick to that date. And so. Yeah. Dates yeah. are scary. <laughs> and especially when you're doing creative things, because if, there's no real good way to establish a time frame for when your mind is going to work and when it's not. Um, you can sit down at a desk all day long, but if you have a, bro a block of some sort, um, you're you're in a lot of trouble <laughs> um, if you if you have a time frame going on. But that's how jobs are. So yeah, uh, yeah, the accountants always have their their ties into how fast you have to work. <laughs> yeah. And I find that the more you put pressure on yourself to get it done and to finish it and to fit that time frame, 
the harder it is to do because I feel like my creative side just kind of shuts down and says, okay, mm -hmm. nope, we're, we're out of creative juices for the day. <laughs> You're right. And, and a lot of people just shut down altogether emotionally and, and psychologically when they've got, say, three or four different like uh, places crashing in on you at once. It's hard to, it's hard to maintain a creative flow when you, when you feel like the world is crashing down on you. So Absolutely. you have to be able to just focus on one thing at a time and multitasking works, but it's, it's hard to stay creative while you're doing that. Um, if you can't compartmentalize things for little blocks of time, it's, it's a lot of trouble. What's your best encouragement or advice for somebody that's dealing with that right now? Um, I'm actually dealing with it right now, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, we're all in it together. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And the best thing I can give you is you have to get one thing done at a time. You have to focus on one thing and check it off the list. And then you can move on to the next thing and everything just starts to lift off of you, which I've been able to, to do over the past couple of days. Um, I've gotten two books uploaded to the printer late last week. Um, one this morning and another's going tomorrow. And so when those pressures get off of me, it's gonna, it's, it's going to feel like I'm a light as a feather. You can breathe. So yes. So just getting one thing done at a time is the biggest thing. Making um, yourself do it because I think exactly. it's easy to say, oh, I don't feel like doing that. I'll do that tomorrow. Right. You have to set small goals and meet those yeah. little goals. And then, and then the bigger ones will fall. So that's, Absolutely. that always works for me. Yeah. That's the best advice. I agree. So. Good. Well, thank you so much, Chad. This has no been problem. fun and it's been great to see you again virtually. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, definitely. All these years. So um, I look forward to hearing the EP. So I'm yeah. going to go and follow your group on Instagram and give us those um, Instagram and Facebook links one more time where we okay. can find you. So my personal one is Casey Overdriven on Instagram. Then it's Overdriven MFG. That's on Instagram also and Facebook. And then it's Loose Bearing Music is on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So, all right, awesome. Well, I'm going to go follow that and um, can't wait to hear the EP. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been cool. great talking thank to you. you. Good talking to you. And um, I will check back and see who gets the guitar. You'll post all of okay. that, I'm sure. Yes, it's going through a sweepstakes company in New York. I, I have, I can't handle any of that on my own without having it look like I've got a play in it. So right. it's all above board. <laughs> so. All right. Well then we all need to buy some guitar picks and that's uh, right. And keep it going. That's right. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye -bye. All right. Bye. Bye.